Wonderful. Beautiful. Okay. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Come on, Sharp. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We feel honored that you're joining us at 9 a.m. because I think some of you might have a holiday. <laughs> yeah. That's a real commitment. We'll still take one more minute and then we'll kick off. So final moment to get yourself a glass of water or coffee or tea. Okay, it's 9 a.m. sharp. Quincy, should we kick off? Yes, let's get this party started. <laughs> Great. So um, welcome everyone. We're super excited to host you here today. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be your moderator for the next two days. My name is Lena Hoffman and I work at ASIF Ventures. ASIF is a really special venture capital fund in Amsterdam that invests exclusively in student fund companies and companies of recent graduates. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about ASIF tomorrow. We'll have some time for that. But uh, yeah, of course, today we're here to speak about Hello Amsterdam, the event that you're all attending, um, and which is hosted by Hello Mentor. Finally, the name has some strange connection. We're not sure what it could be. Uh, Startup Amsterdam and ASIF Ventures. And we really came together uh, to strengthen the startup and scale up ecosystem um, and to assist students or help students in their transition to the labor market. I think especially COVID has had quite a bit of impact on people's ability to find jobs and companies' ability to find talent. Um, and we have a really big focus also this time around on early stage companies, which I think is special because these are companies that also often struggle to find talent. Um, but yeah, Quincy will tell you a little bit more about the event in just a moment. He's really, I would say, the creative mastermind behind this event and also developed the format itself, uh, which I think is quite remarkable in the COVID world to create something that will be this engaging and interactive, hopefully. And uh, yeah, Quincy, without further ado, take it away. Uh, Quincy is the founder or one of the co-founders of Hello Mentor and also, I believe, currently the CEO. Yeah, thank you, Lena. And CEO is kind of a strange title, but that's correct. Um, thank you for this nice introduction, and thank you all for being here this morning at the in the middle of the summer in COVID in the pandemic time and uh, at nine sharp. So uh, good to have you all here. Um, as Lena said, I'm Quincy Dahl. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Hello Amsterdam. That's why we're here, actually, this Hello Amsterdam event and also Hello Mentor. But there uh, will be a session later about Hello Mentor itself. So just to focus literally on Hello Amsterdam today, it kind of originated from um, when I went to Career Fest and hosted Career Fest myself and organized Career Fest. That it was kind of uh, well boring with all kind of recruiters just asking you for so all sorts of things. You had to be at one place at one time. So what we tried to do is make it more decentralized. So when you you just go to visit the company you like to see, and besides that, just do something else with your life, and just just really focus on what you want to learn and what you try to achieve. So. Hello, Amsterdam originated from an idea, a little bit from Museum, Museum Night. I'm not sure if you know Museum Night. In Dutch, we call it Museum Nacht, where you go and visit the different companies. But then COVID happened, so we had to put it online. So that's why we have the program for today. You have the different time slots where you can meet the different companies. In between, you can do whatever you want, and you can literally plan your own route for the upcoming two days. Um, every day we have an opening, so this is today's opening, and we have a really great speaker as well invited, so that will be later. Uh, and tomorrow we also have a, another opening of the day, and then we're going to close off to, uh, in, in the afternoon tomorrow. And we will also be um, uh, sharing the prize with the winners uh, who, uh, who invited uh, uh, and put in some effort into this event as well, and we've got a really cool prize as well for them. So uh, that will be tomorrow at five. Um, and for today also a little bit, what we try to do here is also like Lena described is 
making sure that the ecosystem that you as a talent or you as a startup or scale up know how to find each other because we see that's a it's kind of lacking there are good platforms to connect those two parties together and also get to know some of the cool stars for scale-ups that I didn't even knew. So I had the opportunity to also see all the videos and also meet the different companies. It was quite exciting and <laughs> to see and what, what everybody is doing from robotics still uh, more on the people side, more productivity. So it was really cool to, to see such a diverse pool of companies also here attending and also a diverse pool of talent, of course, here. Uh, so really cool and I'm really honored to be here and to, to host this for you and I think I speak on behalf of the whole team um, so nice to have you here and uh, really looking forward for the next upcoming days um, also some household some things just to like to share with you for today important stuff um, we got the welcome platform and the welcome platform is where you can find everything you need from getting to know, go, go to the forest or to the beach to explore and to be more social in Amiibo rooms till the main stage where, we are, where we're at right now. If you have any questions, Elina Stapel. Elina, can you shout out, please? Can you say something quickly? Hello, hello. I'm uh, your support person. So if you have any questions or difficulties or anything, uh, you can reach out to me in the chat. Yeah, so yeah. If, 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 or via email at contact at hellomentor.nl. So, if there's anything that's not going correctly, just go out and reach out to, to Alina. <clears throat> um, also for today, you can just network on the Amiibo rooms. Uh, every company has got its own room and you know what to do. They'll host their own sessions. Just go and explore and enjoy. We'll set out some announcements when sessions will start. So you might see something popping up in your screen and it will be an announcement that the session will start. So you get announced. If you feel like you can just leave or you can just wander around in the Mimo rooms and play around, have fun, play some beach volleyball or popping champagne bottles on, on the gamification island. So uh, just go out, explore and enjoy. Um, I think any other important notices? Yeah, tomorrow we'll announce the winners. So at the end of the day, um, yeah, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, if you have any questions, you want to discuss things. Um, but most of all, just enjoy and get to meet new people and new companies. So uh, enjoy the ride and uh, I'll pass the word back to Lena now. Thank you, Quincy, and thank you for your clear introduction. Like you said, if you have any questions at all, just drop us a message in the chat. We're really happy to help. Um, but yeah, next up we have, as part of our small morning kickoff, an amazing speaker. Melanie, I actually heard a lot about you in the last year because I work with a lot of young founders. Um, and interestingly enough, you seem to be a huge thought leader, especially among student founders. Um, I think especially those who are interested in the world of impact companies and kind of, yeah, post growth. Um, Melanie's the CEO and co-founder of Radical Open Security, um, which is the world's first nonprofit computer security consultancy. She also co-founded Nonprofit Ventures, which is um, one of the first incubation programs for nonprofit startups. Um, and yeah, Melanie's received a vast amount of prizes for uh, being one of the most inspiring women in tech across different years. Um, one of the most innovative women in the European Un Union in 2019 um, and many more, which is yeah, super inspiring. And as yeah, before the event and also as I kind of heard a lot about you, uh, I did a bit of research and just learned a lot about how you position yourself uh, to yeah, help restructure an economy that really goes into a post growth phase, which I think is extremely interesting because of course we need to redefine how we measure growth in terms of what um, and how we do business in the world because our economy is yeah, really coming under increasing pressure with the climate crisis. So really, really excited to hear from you today and thank you so much for supporting our event and I'll pass it on to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I uh, really appreciate it and thank you so much for inviting me and for the great introduction. So um, yeah, prosperity without growth. Now, most founders, when we get to the startup boot camp, the first thing that happens is we get a PowerPoint slide with a picture of an exponential curve shoved in front of our nose. And we're basically told, okay, so, so this is what you need to do. <laughs> uh, we're also directed to investors. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
usually more or less as quickly as possible. And our definition of success is to sell our company within, yeah, ideally three to five years. Now, most founders don't actually have this in mind when starting a company. We're thinking about, yeah, building great companies, <laughs> making cool technology, <laughs> making the world better. So, you know, one of the things that I've been spending some time thinking about over the last few years is how can we make bootstrapping sexy again? <laughs> now, bootstrapping is exactly what it sounds like, basically pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. So what this means is actually starting your company without the venture capitalists, <laughs> you know? I mean, no offense, offense of course, uh, meant to, to the VCs uh, that are out there. Some kinds of companies certainly are easier to bootstrap than others. Uh, but, you know, especially now in today's platform economy, it's not too hard to just start a service company with a platform, which is basically matching consumers uh, with producers <laughs> and then just placing a small margin on top of it. And it's extremely easy to bootstrap that. So you can bootstrap the start service company and you can use the service company to start products. Now, the whole idea of doing this is you can start a company that is financially independent. See, most people celebrate when they get VC, but what we don't understand is that actually equity and giving away equity in particular, it's a form of debt. <laughs> you know, and essentially, in a way, it's kind of like starting a company already being sort of in debt at the very beginning. The other thing is it's actually also making life harder for yourself <laughs> uh, because you're starting with a big pot of money and you would think, why is starting with money harder? <laughs> you know, the, the reason why it's harder is because when you have money, what you become really good at is spending it, <laughs> you know? Whereas if you actually start lean and mean, and uh, you know, it forces you when you're starting with nothing to be creative. And it also forces you to have a laser focus on your value proposition and also on your business model. <laughs> because quite simply, you need launching customers to get started. You don't have money that you can get from anywhere else. <laughs> So, you know, and when you start with money, it allows you, and, and I'm, you know, certainly as a techie, you know, we tend to be in love with things like technology. The problem with money is it allows us to build what we want to build rather than building what the market wants us to build, <laughs> you know? And of course, the, the, la the problems with product market fit are the number one problems with the startup ecosystem. Nine out of every 10 startups fail, 90%. If you think about it, for most things, that would be actually quite a uh, quite a dismal uh, track record. <laughs> so, you know, another thing also is we need to think about building social enterprises. <laughs> you know, right now, social enterprise tends to sort of be relegated to a kind of, uh, you know, uh, subset. It's kind of like an offshoot of the, of the more traditional uh, business education system. So, you know, social enterprise might be an optional, you know, uh, six ECTS course in the business school, or it might be, uh, you know, you have an entire separate incubator for it. So like uh, Impact Hub. Um, I mean, no, nothing against uh, the Impact Hubs out there. They're awesome. <laughs> um, but I mean, really Impact should be at the core also of every incubator, <laughs> you know? I think you, I also would say that most aspiring founders should pay attention to the business model of the incubator <laughs> that you're basically signing up with. Here's the thing, it, it actually affects what they teach you because uh, the majority of startup incubators, they will take equity in their startups. But essentially what that means is it's really hard at that point for them to diverge from teaching that sort of capital scale exit model, the Silicon Valley model uh, of entrepreneurship, because quite simply, they them, themselves actually, a stake of their financial success <laughs> is in your exiting, <laughs> right? So if you come to them with uh, ideas like, hey, have you thought about building, you know, moderately successful, sustainable companies for the future that don't exit, they're going to be like, yeah, but, you know, we can't survive off of this. <laughs> you know, I mean, also similarly with uh, with universities, typically the more um, 
endowment <laughs> that a university has, uh, like a business school, the less uh, willing that they are to also uh, teach <laughs> new ideas, also like like questioning growth. <laughs> so, and and a lot of people don't actually usually think about it, and they also don't, uh, you know, there's there's not much of a conscious conversation about this financial conflict of interest in business education, <laughs> but it's most certainly there. I'd like to, for example, show a few examples of how I think the Dutch startup ecosystem does this right. Uh, take, for example, some of the academic incubators, uh, like the Amsterdam Center for Entrepreneurship, ACE, or also uh, Yes Delft, <laughs> you know, another really excellent uh, startup incubator you can find uh, associated with the Tate of Delft. See, they have a different business model. <laughs> uh, the way that it works is uh, they have a kind of pay it forward model, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, the, first of all, they're receiving government subsidy, which is part of the reason why their their existence isn't quite as dependent upon uh, their companies exiting. Um, but basically, uh, you know, the consequences that that has is they're far more open to new forms of business, also because being affiliated with universities, it's cool research, <laughs> you know. So and and you know, depending on what kind of startup uh, that you want to be, you're going to get extremely di different treatment from these academic incubators <laughs> than you sometimes get from the more commercial incubators. Now, the more commercial incubators tend to follow the incubator model that was started by Paul Graham from Y Combinator. Paul Graham, he's you know, he he writes a lot of things. A lot of it is very good, but he's also sometimes he he's a bit of a controversial figure. He wrote a blog post, and um, in the blog post, he, it started out by saying, I am a manufacturer of economic inequality. <laughs> now, he, he clearly did quite well with himself with Y Combinator. <laughs> Um, this is, of course, why a bunch of other commercial incubators sprung up with the same model, whether it's, you know, tech stars or, you know, I mean, there, there's there's just so many of them. And they started in Silicon Valley and then they sort of, you know, drifted across, you know, the, the Atlantic uh, here to Europe. And we've all sort of unquestioningly uh, taken this over. But for those of us that are in the startup ecosystem, I just want to remind everybody that also the innovation ecosystem needs innovation. You know, we can't just continue to operate with the same tired model, <laughs> you know, that, that we inherited from the United States, especially considering how much more social <laughs> the Netherlands is. Now, the good news is we're in Amsterdam. Yes. <laughs> now, Amsterdam just so happens to be one of the craziest, funkiest, most social, you know, most artistically inspired, awesome places on the planet. Now, I'm biased, of course, I happen to live here, <laughs> but we can see this very much uh, in the way that the, the city behaves. Take a look, for example, at their new economics initiatives, like the Amsterdam Donut, <laughs> you know, which is a really great initiative uh, by the Gemeente Amsterdam uh, to support new thoughts of, uh, you know, with new economics. Similarly, also within uh, the universities, I mean, the uh, uh, the Hochschule von Amsterdam uh, also just uh, hired, well, just <laughs> pre-pandemic, hired uh, Kate Rayworth as a professor of practice uh, in the school. You know, so there is a lot of really great stuff uh, that happens to be going on here. Um, also, a small plug for myself, I'm also running an, uh, an incubator that I call a post-growth startup incubator. It's called Nonprofit Ventures. And we just so happen to have applications opening in September uh, for our 2022 cohort. And that is also uh, teaching uh, founders basically how to create not for profit businesses. And when I say not for profit, uh, I mean, businesses that basically give the, all of their profits away to charity, and that have no financial extraction that's going to investors uh, or also to the co-founders. We just get middle class salaries. But in, in essence, we're not creating the 1%. <laughs> 
So I've also, uh, it, with my own company, Radically Open Security, provided an example <laughs> for how to do this. And in nonprofit ventures, I'm really, really giving the roadmap so others can do it. Radically Open Security is a seven-year-old security company. We donate 90% of our profits to charity. The last 10% is our cash flow buffer. <laughs> uh, you know, we've got huge customers, like we've pen tested the Corona Melder, but also the European Commission has hired us to pen test, when I say pen test, I mean security testing. The um, COVID vaccination app, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, not app, but the digital, uh, sorry, the digital vaccination passports, uh, that are coming out soon. You know, we're the largest security pen test uh, company for Ahold, but also we have given over half a million euros <laughs> to charity, to the NLNet Foundation in the last six years. So anyway, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to cut this off. <laughs> uh, but what I want to say to you is that business can be one of the most powerful forms of activism. If you're thinking about starting a business, if you're thinking about joining a business and getting hired by a business, know that there are social alternatives out there. Whatever you spend your working life doing, you're gonna be spending a considerable amount of time and that's going to have a huge impact and even become part of your identity. Choose wisely. So with that, uh, I welcome you uh, also to, to Hello Amsterdam. Enjoy uh, the upcoming uh, time here. And I hope that you all can find what you really need in the end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Melanie. Super interesting. I think especially for me as someone who works in the venture capital world, because when I initially stepped into the ASIF, I thought, okay, really exciting. I can talk to some of the big impact funds in the Netherlands. And then realized very quickly that few of them have done any work to redefine growth. But yeah, just kind of tried to measure the positive impact that these companies make, which they of course do. So yeah, I think your work is really, really important. And thank you for kind of leading the way and showing how we could potentially restructure how business is done. And um, I also think it's really inspiring that you have the technical background and yet kind of sunk your teeth into the business world. And I hope that also for the participants here today, um, yeah, you'll see how exciting it is to work in a startup or scale up and all the opportunities that it can bring to be a problem solver, essentially, um, and potentially even yeah, solve really real life problems that have huge impacts on our society. Um, yeah, I think we're even a little bit early. So I don't know exactly, Lena, how should we continue? Um, should we take the next 10 minutes so people can run off get a final tea or coffee. Um, and then we'll start off with Kaiza, I think at 9.30 sharp. Yeah, maybe some final words from my side. So be, in be on time and just go and enjoy. <clears throat> so um, take this time also to uh, get a drink, go to the toilet. And then uh, we'll see you uh, at the end or tomorrow again, right? Tomorrow at nine again, we'll start it at nine again. Yeah, we'll also have a second really inspiring guest speaker, um, Letabo. So yeah, be there. She'll tell us a little bit about her journey as a founder and CTO. And I think it will be really, really interesting just as this morning was. And thank you so much. Have a really great day. Uh, send us a few messages to let us know how you think the event is going. And like we said, if you have any questions, just reach out. And uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Yes. Have a, enjoy, 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 everyone. Until tomorrow. <laughs> thank Bye. you, Melanie. Thank you, Melanie. Of course. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for kicking us off, guys.